Hi, I'm Millie. I'm autistic and ADHD, and um, this is my series where I ask uh, questions from y'all about, um, yeah, my experience being neurodivergent and my experience being gender diverse and other similar things, whatever you want to ask me about, basically. And um, yeah, thanks for the person who took the time to write a thoughtful question and to everyone else who submitted questions as well. Um, the questions have really been, yeah, like just super deep, super, super interesting. I've really appreciated them. And if you want to ask me a question for a future video, I'll have a link to the forum in the description below. So the question is, do you think there are things you want to do but can't do because of autism? And yeah, so that is something, it's a really good question. Um, it's something I think about a lot, especially just because I've been spent years now working on getting accommodations and asking for help for things. And I really struggled most of my life with just not even being able, like having a hard time even asking for help at all, that kind of thing. So, so I've had to think about a lot because especially as an unfortunate, unfortunately I've just run into so many people questioning, uh, you know, like whether I can do something or not. Right. And what does it mean? to be able to do something or not, right? And so, and then that ties into my internalized shame as well about, um, and internalized ableism about, you know, thinking about real, whether I really can do something or not. I think what I've learned over time is that it's not exactly about what's possible versus not possible, but it's more about weighing out the positives versus the negatives. And yeah, so it depends on the definite, how you define being able to do something. Like, so to me, if I can get through something once, but it causes so much anxiety or even ends up being traumatic and it's something I have to do regularly, then, um, then that's just not safe or sustainable basically. And and there's lots of things like that in life, of course, and uh, make stuff like, like working and self-care kind of stuff very difficult. So an example to answer the question is something that I think about every day and multiple times a day that I've always wanted to be able to do is just, is just feed myself properly without being constantly stressed about it or like be able to do it properly at all sometimes, stress or or not, you know, um, and just just feel more so self-sufficient about food and cooking or, or you know, be in a society where I could get help with that and not feel like, like a burden or even have that be possible, which it seems for the most part is, is not possible or like I'm still trying, but I've been trying for, you know, my whole life essentially and it's difficult. Um, so an example of the like can't thing is that, you know, people look to the past and see that I've like, I've cooked meals and that kind of thing. Right. And a lot of this goes back to one thing I wish people could do is that if people knew more about autism or all, like, especially generally with invisible disabilities and challenges and things like that barriers that when you do something rather than say, oh, you did that. So you must not have an issue doing that because you did it. You did it once. So do it again. You know, if people knew how much of a struggle it was and how much fallout there was from it, especially if you, although they only see you in that one moment, then you know, or if they just knew more about autism or ADHD and executive dysfunction and, you know, just the struggle of just being able to make decisions about things and energy and all that kind of stuff. Then, then they could say, when you do do it, when you, when I, when I do cook something or do something to take care of myself, then they could say like, 
wow, like that must have been really difficult for you. You know, like, like it's a triumph, right? So much of our society right now is the reverse that you do something, it's really motivating to try to do something that's difficult because you try to do it and then it just makes people, a lot of people believe that you just never had issues in the first place. So, so why even try, right? But I still do try. I try, try really hard and I work with all kinds of people, an occupational therapist and just keep coming back to having this disordered eating and stuff like that, right? And um, yeah, and it's hard and it feels very shameful and you have to eat multiple times a day and it gives me this difficult relationship with food. It's like a love-hate relationship kind of thing. And yeah, so to be more specific about actually doing it, it's not impossible for me to buy ingredients, prepare them, and follow the recipe. But executive functioning issues especially make it difficult. And then it also uses up too many spoons or, you know, not literal spoons for cooking, but energy unit spoons. So really it's executive functioning that gets in the way. You know, just being able to choose things like what ingredients to buy and what recipes to make. And, you know, I just get really wrapped up in morals around food and what I should be eating and my values and that kind of thing. And then, and then more specific to autism as well, like the sensory and textural issues, finding cons consistent textures and... Um, yeah, just things I can tolerate eating without feeling disgusted is really difficult. And yeah, I'll eat like the same thing for a long time. And then, and then, um, you know, like that's a safe food. And then that all of a sudden itself becomes something I can't eat anymore. And I go through these cycles. I have a really hard time with like smells generated by cooking and how they linger and stuff like that sensory issues with how things are packaged. Um, so all the, uh, you know, sensory and executive functioning challenges of just even going shopping and that kind of thing, um, making decisions between things, all the lights and noise and all that kind of thing. So, so yeah, I can push myself and I really push myself in a lot of things. And often I push myself too hard and you know, I could cook a nice, healthy meal for myself. But that would probably be the only thing I do that day, right? Like the only thing in terms of like work and play and self-care. So I might not be able to do any, get any projects done, answer any emails, um, you know, do fun, creative projects I've been wanting to do, like maybe even shower, those, you know, those kind of things, do laundry, right? And so, yeah, maybe I can do that once. And more often than not, I'm so, like, flustered and bothered by the smells and everything and just overwhelmed by the end of it that I don't even want to eat anymore or I don't enjoy it. And, and certainly overall, what becomes the issue often is that, yeah, on balance, just, it's just not worth uh, the benefit is not worth the pain of going through it, right? It's not worth having a meltdown or a shutdown um, that takes days to recover from just for one meal when you have to have multiple meals a day. So, so yeah, that's a big thing. That's one of the biggest things is food and cooking and that kind of thing that I wish I could just enjoy and take care of myself in that way without it being so stressful. Probably the biggest thing I would like that I feel like, again, it's not can't, but is a huge barrier is just being able to fit in a bit better. Like I've come a long way in accepting myself and I enjoy my life of being kind of weird and just working on my stuff, but it's just, yeah, a lot of times, like, I am really desperately lonely, to be honest. And, and I have some good friends, but the biggest issue is that is kind of fitting in in terms of that sense of 
um, being able to work and support myself or have community, you know, have people there who can, we can take care of each other and watch out for each other, that kind of thing. Like you, you can have some friends, but it's not the same as really having community, right? And, and if you can't work, unfortunately, all our world still revolves around money and I'm lucky enough to have some disability income, but it is absolutely not enough to live on at all, which is not right for anybody. It's really hard not to be poor and have negative mental health consequences when feeling so much alienation and rejection on a near daily basis. And, and the issue is it's usually coming from the people that are in a position of power over me. And, and they're often like supposedly be the ones that are supposed to help me too. Right. And, or at the very least have a position, they're in a position of power to really affect my quality of life in a negative or positive way. So you know, I have to be able to fit in and get along with them. Otherwise they might just do the bare minimum or even though this is not right, like, you know, just not, not want to help me. And, uh, you know, that's hard when it's already been shown that like we're discriminating against even before we even open our mouths, you know, just within seconds. Right. So yeah, in that way, like I like being myself and having friends, based on that true expression of myself. But still, to fit in in a wider sense, you need that, you still need that. Ultimately, whether I can or can't do things because of autism, I just think I and other autistic people could have a much more full life and, and, and do the things we want to do if, if we just had the right supports, right? There's still some things related to sensory issues, especially that always have to work around and always be an issue. Like the sound of somebody crunching on chips with their mouth open will always cause me uh, intense, intense dis discomfort. Um, yeah, to the point of really triggering panic a lot of the time. So that's just an example. And and in that example of support, be, people could not, not do that around me or and or I can wear noise canceling headphones, that kind of thing. But Again, it takes so much clarification and explaining and education to everybody around you, right? It's hard without the effort coming from, coming externally from other people. Like I, I just can't do all the educating and explaining and everything myself. Um, that's why I wanna do it on here. It's just easier if people come and watch the videos when they want to and they're more receptive to the information. So thank you. I really appreciate that question, thank you. If you'd like to watch more videos about my experience with neurodiversity, uh, you can check out the rest of this channel and you can subscribe for more videos like this in the future, I would appreciate that. Thanks so much for watching, bye.